has somewhat to do with, of course, your body reserving as much water as it can. Uh, that has to do with the hormone of ADH, basically um, the antidiuretic hormone. Uh, what that does, it withholds as much water because, you know, we still have blood in our system. We still need some kind of source of liquid to keep things moving along. And so the body will do that smart enough to kind of keep the water that it needs to. But at the same time, it's also the body is detoxifying a lot and it's getting rid of a lot of stuff. So it really concentrates that urine. And so it's going to put a lot of uh, stress on the kidneys. <music> What's up fasters, Dr. Legrand here, here for another fasting video. And today we're gonna to talk about the physiology behind the body when you are going in a dry fasting state. It's always interesting to know with this new big thing that people are trying to do more and more of, even though, yeah, dry fasting has been around since the beginning of human existence, but it's becoming a very popular media thing of people starting to use it to lose weight and I've always stressed this, is that you've got to be really careful when you are doing dry fasting and understanding what's going on in the body, especially for you. Everybody is different. So I thought I might shed a little bit more light of what really kind of goes on in the body's physiology when you're going through a dry fast. So here we go. So first and foremost, just with any type of fasting, but we're talking about dry fasting here, is when you go in a fasted state or you start reducing calories and you're not consuming a certain amount of calories, what happens is that sure your body utilizes the food that you have remaining. It also starts depleting the glycogen storage in our liver and our muscle tissue. And after a while, we eventually reach to a point where we reach ketosis. And what that is is basically it's starting to break down our ketone bodies, breaking down the fat cells to break down the ketones and therefore utilizing that as a source of energy when it moves and switches over to that. So dry fasting does that at a faster pace than other types of fasting. But what's also interesting about fasting, specifically dry fasting, what happens in the body's physiology is not only, yeah, it's breaking down fat cells, all sorts of different types of fasting can do that. But when you're not consuming any water, you gotta understand it's gonna put a lot of stress on the kidneys. Is it not necessarily a bad thing if you are a very healthy individual, but if you do have kidney issues, then that becomes a problem. So some of the research that has been found with dry fasting and looking at the sources of how the kidneys are functioning during a dry fasting state are pretty interesting. So in an interesting study, they found that during a dry fasting period, specifically they were kind of looking at this, of course, during um, Ramadan, which I know it's not the best research. I wish they would utilize looking at more healthier parts of Ramadan, even though some people Ramadan do do it healthy, but as we know, not everybody does. And so the research I would say is a little more skewed on this, but this is what we kind of have to go on. But a lot of it sheds some light as far as what goes on with the kidneys. And what they did find, and this is true, if you think about the body's physiology, because you're not utilizing any water, and when you're not using light, you're using water, things do elevate. So they did find that uh, creatine and also uric acid elevated in the kidneys and in, you know, in the body, which does happen when you're not utilizing any water. The other thing they found is glomerular filtration was decreased, which makes sense. Also, the renal function was decreased, which makes sense again, because you're not drinking anything, so therefore your kidneys are not going to be doing anything. They're not really filtrating too much. I mean, you do pee still a little bit as you're dry fasting. It's just not as much. So those levels do decrease and that's what's happening in your body's physiology when you're doing in a dry fast. Some other interesting things that they did find uh, in another study, they looked at people who were doing dry fasting is that cholesterol levels elevated, not just, you know, good or bad cholesterols, but all types of different cholesterol did elevate during a dry fast. And again, this would make more sense because the body, again, is going to be breaking down a lot of fat cells in a significant amount because what's happening as far as when you are in a dry fasted state, the body still need to utilize water. So it's trying to get any kind of water source it can get from, from our fat, from anywhere, unnecessary, unessential proteins, things that it can utilize for energy and also for, for water. So you're gonna see cholesterol levels elevate. So it doesn't necessarily a bad thing unless you do tend to have high levels of cholesterol. So you gotta kinda of keep that in mind when you're deciding to do dry fasting. 
Another thing that I want to mention to keep in mind is going back to kidneys. So really the big difference when we're talking about the physiology between water fasting and dry fasting is essentially all the same thing except for the kidneys because the kidneys is what is the ultimate filtration process. And when you're dry fasting, you're reaching a levels of autophagy at a faster rate versus water fasting or being on the keto diet. And yet there's still not even enough research out there if we even know that the keto diet reaches autophagy levels. Uh, you know, there hasn't been enough long-term studies to kind of see that. I think they do just because of the ketosis process and just things that uh, are very similar with fasting. But going back with the dry fasting aspect with the kidneys, the when your autophagy levels are increasing ex exponentially through dry fasting, it, you're detoxifying a lot. You're getting rid of a lot of waste with increasing levels of autophagy. And of course, the kidneys are going to go under a lot of more stress during that process to filter all of that waste in the system. I mean, haven't you noticed when you are doing dry fasting, your urine is highly concentrated. Uh, is that a more highly concentrated? It isn't just because, uh, I mean, it is has somewhat to do with, of course, your body reserving as much water as it can. Uh, that has to do with the hormone of ADH, basically um, the antidiuretic hormone, uh, what that does, it withholds as much water because, you know, we still have blood in our system. We still need some kind of source of liquid to keep things moving along. And so the body will do that it's smart enough to kind of keep the water that it needs to. But at the same time, it's also the body is detoxifying a lot and it's getting rid of a lot of stuff. So it really concentrates that urine. And so it's going to put a lot of uh, stress on the kidneys. So if you deal with any kind of kidney stone issues and have had in the past urinary tract infections, I'd be very cautionate when it comes to dry fasting. I know for myself, I don't have never dealt with any of that. Uh, I've always made sure to keep hydrated for long periods of time throughout my life and, you know, keep my diet clean as possible. You know, hopefully knock on wood uh, that have to deal with something that crucial uh, as a kidney stone. Heard it's just, you know, very painful. Definitely don't want to go through that. But I would be very cautionate, especially if you have had a history of kidney stones a lot. Uh, I just would not do dry fasting uh, until you've done a lot of water fasting, min fasting, cleaning up your diet before even jumping into that. So just again, just really summarize everything that we just talked about here. When you are dry fasting, what the body physiology does, again, it depletes the glycogen storage in the liver. And as it's doing that, it's breaking down our fat cells, breaking down the ketone bodies. But the other important thing to realize is that during a dry fast, it's going to really put a lot more stress on the kidneys because uh, levels of autophagy do increase exponentially and it's going to have more concentrated urine and waste going through our kidneys. So therefore, we have to be a little bit more cautious if we tend to have kidney issues or any other kind of health concerns. Thanks for watching and if you want to find out about more about dry fasting, go ahead and hit this playlist right here. Also subscribe to our channel, hitting this button right here so you don't miss out on any of the future fasting videos. And then of course, if you want to know the difference between water fasting and dry fasting, I'll leave a video, check out this video right here. And until next time, this is Dr. Legrand and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.